The beginning for me was creating something that you couldn't see. My school teachers was using me as an example of failure because of having a learning difference. Willard will be nothing when he leaves school. What is nothing? Nothing doesn't exist, there's always something. We all came from nothing. The beginning of time. I decided to go as small as I possibly could. And the first thing I did was an angel. I carved it out of a piece of nylon. My mother said it was too big. It's not small enough. So I went on a journey to seek a new method of taking it smaller. And the only way I could do that is to get a microscope. You have external forces that interfere with your work. Static electricity, the pulse in your finger, your own breath. You can actually inhale some of your own work if you're not careful. You're risking it jumping just like a tiddlywink and losing it. To counteract that, I've got to slow my system down. Because you are working on something that is smaller than a full stop in a newspaper. I've got to time everything, and when my pull stops, that's when I move. I've learned to hold my breath and work in between my heartbeat. We are microscopic in comparison to the universe. Little things, microscopic things, are important. At its heart, the process is actually exceedingly simple. You take something raw, you add a few well-chosen ingredients, you add salt, you either control the conditions or if you're lucky enough, you live in the correct conditions to then just put it aside and wait. Time is what creates the flavors. It's what allows all those flavors to marry and swell. There's this beautiful alchemy, this beautiful magic that happens. We live in a culture where everything is immediate, everything is ready. And it's one of the things that I rebelled against because I felt like it was important that we returned to appreciating the value that time adds rather than the value lost because of time lost. I'm still learning how to wait the right amount of time. I'm working with processes and in most cases recipes that we've been using for centuries. There's nothing that I'm doing that they weren't doing hundreds of years ago. When you eat this, this sort of cured meat, you're really tasting part of the past in a way that really can connect you to your ancestors, to the people who came before you. I think it's a simple, universal truth that great things take time. When you look at the night sky, you're seeing all those stars. I think you're aware that you're in a timescape. The light from those objects has to come from such an enormous distance. You're not looking at them as they are, but rather as they were. The sun is eight and a half light minutes away, so you're seeing the sun as it was eight and a half minutes ago. The sun is just amazing. It's a star in close-up, so it gives us a very unique perspective on the universe. It's difficult to get your head around the difference between the time that you're perceiving and the time at the object. 
I think it's when you start to go out into the universe and you appreciate that there are these enormous distances which induce these vast delays. All the stars you see individually are in our own Milky Way galaxy, and the Milky Way is like a gravitationally bound collection of stars. There's estimated to be several hundred billion stars in that collection. If you look outside of the Milky Way, you can see other galaxies. And they would all, on average, contain, say, a hundred billion stars in their own right. And what is really mind-blowing is that if you represented each one of those galaxies by a grain of salt, there are enough galaxies that we can see that you could overfill an Olympic-sized swimming pool with those grains of salt. So if you then looked at each one of those individually, that would represent a galaxy containing 100 billion stars. We're now discovering that lots of those stars have got planets going around them. So that must mean there would be trillions and trillions of planets out there in the universe. And I suppose the ultimate question is, are we alone in the universe? And I think with those odds, the likelihood has to be pretty low. There has to be life out there. When I first came here, on one of my walks, the sun came out just as I was passing a pond and hit a cluster of frog spawn. And it projected a perfect shadow print with all the constellations of light refracted off the top of the gel. I decided that it would be a beautiful thing to recreate in the darkroom. I exposed the spawn in the dark onto the paper and made a direct print of what was there. The next day, I noticed that the eggs had grown into fetal shapes, and the following day, the fetal shapes had started to get larger. The sequence unfolded of three months of making a print every day or every other day of the small changes and the development of spawn through to frog. There was a strange sense of this wide cycle of time of emerging life. I am definitely interested in holding on to moments, stilling something that's chaotic and moving. I thought, what if the whole landscape was a dark room? You could work with a river, and you could treat the river like a big roll of negative film and print at night by just submerging the paper under the water's surface. They say that you never step in the same river twice. And certainly when you're looking at a river, it's moving so fast, but there's this desire to still the river and show these amazing forms. Photography seems to me very much about trying to capture those moments, to capture time. The first time that we really began to look closely at the notion of time was via the animation. Because with animation, when you're filming, every frame is 1 24th of a second. 24 frames makes one second, so you're making 24 movements, isolated movements. So right away, you're, you're slowing down time by the very nature of the animation technique. When you begin to animate, you're working by radar, an inner radar. You have a feeling for what the movement or the gesture might be. Sometimes we work in the theater or the opera, collaborating with director, costume designers, you know, you're meeting the actors and actresses. But then we come back to the studio and you come through these doors, you know that this space is hallowed space where time stops. Right away you understand that this is where time gets severed and it's opened up. The sense of patience is something that we've grown up with. You know what it takes to do a piece of animation. You know that you have to eke it out with a toothpick or a tweezers to pull out dandelions or filaments. You're getting into the grit of the object itself. 
going into its own skeleton. It's surgery in a way, animation. <laughs>